One might wonder why, like science, humanity hasn't refined itself and advanced such that we have a world without wars and all the needs of humanity are easily met, no more programming and propagandizing and uh, constant never-ending atrocities. How has humanity gotten itself into so much trouble, especially now with the pandemic and mandate to be injected by a corrupt government? And facing extinction and the possibility of world totalitarianism. How did this happen? Whose fault is it? I don't see these obvious kind of questions being asked. We're under a tsunami of information, but this has been excluded. Why? We're all individually responsible for the horrid state we find ourselves in. Is that true? I would suggest that in a way we are. After all, We've allowed it to progress to this level, but is it fair? Could anyone have done anything to change it? Some individuals have done their best, like Martin Luther King, Gandhi, now Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. and others, but the vast majority are not activists. One could easily surmise that there are many reasons for this. After all, we've been under a constant and ubiquitous, ubiquitous barrage of propaganda from the moment we were born. Our minds have been programmed very specifically to believe in pretty much what we believe. This is not just my opinion. One could easily investigate to see how this is true. We depend on information to make decisions and come to conclusions. The media, the education system, entertainment, religion, all of it is controlled by a relatively small group of people. Vanguard and BlackRock are two holding companies that control most of the wealth in the, of the world and own the banks, the multinationals, almost everything as they're worth is in the hundreds of trillions. The reason why all of these horrors have continued proliferated and gotten worse is because humanity has constantly been deceived and manipulated. It's as simple as that. The popular idea that the outside is a reflection of the inside has some truth in it, but it can be confusing. The world is not a bad place because my mind is bad. It's a bad place because my mind and everyone else's mind believes in things that have permitted it. We believe that we're free, that capitalism is the best economic system to manage society, that war is acceptable, that voting for the best of the worst is democracy, the contamination of the environment is acceptable and allowable, etc., etc. What we accept and have accepted shows how much our minds have been hijacked. George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, and many others have seen through the this deception and have warned us. Even JFK and Eisenhower have sent out the alarm. But the immense powers that be just roll over and on by these little tweets of light and nothing of significance is improved or rectified. They just disappear down the memory hole. In this way, the people are not going to wake up, most likely, no matter what ends up being revealed. If they shut down the internet, it will be like all the lights are turned off and we will be left alone, lost, and under their control. Even with the internet, we've not been able to self-organize and stand up for our rights, for the planet, and for all the species that are being wasted daily, and reorganize humanity to create a just and ethical society. We have remained divided and powerless. We find ourselves at the mercy of the merciless. Protests and revolutions have not worked. Overthrowing governments have not worked. Changing the people into government has not worked. A new strategy is that we must end vertical governance and self-govern, organize, manage horizontally, decentralized, localized, without politicians or lobbyists, by removing the entrance points for corruption. The only hope I see is for us to create a new, non-spying, secure internet, which some are attempting to do right now and to create a network of networks of millions to billions of like-minded individuals, groups, organizations, and networks with the most advanced tools for organizing and collaborating on all scales. It's a way to unify and become a force for good. We've been working on such a network since March 2020 and are still at least a year away from launch as it is complex and expensive. We want and need to collaborate with any and all who are doing the same or similar. But it isn't easy with problems such as interoperability, maintaining the sovereignty of one's organization, equalizing when some have invested much more time and money than others, creating the state of our tools, managing horizontally, etc. Now, the 4th of May, 2021, huge protests once again are surging and filling up the streets in many countries. Myanmar, 
that's Burma, Colombia, Lebanon, Germany, France, India, Hong Kong, Yemen, Algeria, Greece, Romania, Dominican Republic, and just to name some. In the last two years, more huge protests than ever, and now again, but what have they accomplished? Virtually nothing. Why? Because there's no coordination, no leveraging demand, such as restructuring all governments now from vertical to horizontal. It's like a traumatic moment when the individual has no recourse and must accept an untenable situation and can only scream. It's not a solution or a strategy. It's only a reaction. In many areas, the government, with their military and police, are resorting to brutal attempts at repression. Under the paramilitary narco government of Colombia, people are disappearing. In many places like Myanmar, protesting is putting your life on the line. The left, people who want to move to a more just, equitable, just, and, and ecological world, are asleep at the wheel, holding summits, talking endlessly about regenerative practices, eco-villages, etc., fantasizing, wishful thinking, in denial about what is happening right in front of the whole world, what needs to be addressed right now, before all these great regenerative ideas can be implemented at the necessary scale, is the root causes that must be addressed that keep and perpetrate, perpetuates mounting multiple crises. It's not hard for one to deduce that if vaccine passports become allowed in all the countries, that that will be all it will take to have humanity in an inescapable trap a la 1984. If to be allowed to travel, fly, work, go to school to survive, one must be injected with whatever the government wants. The nanoparticles are very hard to detect. We have accepted and invited the Trojan horse right inside of our bodies. I don't wish to sound alarmist, but I am sounding the alarm. They're using fear and lies to manipulate consent. Nothing new. The indoctrinated people are made to believe that anyone not wanting the jab deserves to have their freedoms restricted as they're jeopardizing everyone by refusing. And this is selfish, dangerous, and unacceptable. And in this way, all of us will be corralled into this horrifying, tyrannous trap. Doctors are reporting much success with cures for COVID-19. Link below but they are suppressed and censored. Why? Well, anyone who can reason can see why, because they want everyone to believe that there is no choice but to get vaxxed. Many believe their propaganda, but it's the only way to end, that it's the only way to end the scourge. But is it really true? Obviously not. All the good people wanting to use this time to move us towards a more beautiful world need to wake up and get serious about what's happening now. Shift the focus and get real collaborate to stand up for freedom at this moment. If you agree with this commentary, please spread and share it. You can use, we can use all the help we can get. Yes.